Hey everyone, welcome. Another example here. This time we're going to be dealing with a thin walled pressure vessel, but we're going to take into account the third dimension. So we're also going to be dealing with the 3D Mohr circle. All right. So what are we given here? We got a propane tank. It's got a wall thickness of 6.25 millimeters, a radius of 100 millimeters, and the gauge pressure of 2,000 kilopascals. I've drawn that up there. So gauge pressure, that's the pressure in addition to the atmospheric pressure that's already on both sides of the propane tank wall. So we're asked to find the absolute maximum shear stress at point A. So we can pull point A out of the propane tank here and we can draw it like so with a sigma 1 and a sigma 2. And we know this is the plain stress condition. You can pop back to the video on thin walled pressure vessels for the derivation. But we know that sigma 1 is PR over T. So that's just fairly simple, 2 megapascals times 100 millimeters divided by 6.25. So that R over T, we'll figure out that's 16. That's greater than 10, so we know our thin walled pressure vessel equations are valid. So sigma 1 comes out to be 32 MPa. We know that sigma 2 is just half of that for a cylindrical thin walled pressure vessel. So 16 MPa. So that was pretty quick. But let's draw this out in 3D, okay? Because we know that there is actually a third dimension. In fact, we know that that third dimension of stress is equal to P on the inside of the pressure vessel, the pressure, and it's equal to zero on the outside. So it goes from P to zero through the wall thickness. But we also know from our derivation previously that the error will be small if we assume that's zero on both sides, okay? Partially because this R over T we have is 16. So sigma 1 is 16 times P and sigma 2 would be 8 times P. So it's really not a big deal to just say, okay, because we're, we're so much larger with our sigma 1 and sigma 2, we can actually just say that sigma 3 is 0 on both sides of the element as shown. Okay, great. So let's take a step back and see what we've done so far. We found all the principal stresses on this element at A. We know these are all principal stresses because there are no shear on any of the, there's no shear on any of these faces, okay? So that's how you know that these are principal stresses. But we're asked to find the absolute maximum shear stress. So we're gonna need our help from our buddy Otto Mohr, who came up with this circle, you know, the German dude. And I would suggest going back to those videos if you're not fresh on those equations, okay? Let's just dive right in and start finding the, the different parts of the Mohr circle. So first of all, the center of the circle, sigma average. That's going to be 32 plus 16 MPa divided by 2, or 24 MPa. The radius of the circle is given by the difference divided by 2, so 32 minus 16 over 2, and that is not 24 MPa. Scratch that. That would be 8 MPa. Now we note that the sigma average and r that we've just found is just for one of the Mohr circles out of three. In three dimensions, you're gonna have three Mohr circles, one for each plane, okay? One for each way of looking at this cube, from the top, from the side, and from the front, okay? Now let's say sigma one is equal to the y direction, sigma two is the x, and sigma three is the z direction, okay? Well, boom, yeah, I just drew all those circles really quick while you weren't looking. So let's digest them. Okay, so firstly, the xy plane. And uh, you can see I drew the coordinates on the top right of that little cube, the y, x, and z. So the xy plane is the one that we solve for with the sigma average of 24 and the r of 8. There is a slight error in what I've drawn here. And if you catch it, put it in the comments and you'll get a special gold star. Now the blue circle to the left is the one for the xz plane. So that's looking at the element from the top. We have a 16 MPa and a zero. Those are our principal stresses for that element. And then finally, the yz plane, which is looking at the element from the side along the x-axis. Okay, we see that we have a 32 MPa up and a zero MPa on the side. And that gives us this biggest circle. Okay, take a pause, take it in, make sure you do all your checking, and you know it's also 
it's always possible I make mistakes, so let me know how you feel about this. We can go ahead and find our absolute maximum shear stress because it's the radius of the biggest circle we have. So I've labeled that at the top here. Tau max is the radius of the YZ Morse circle, or in this case, 16 MPa, okay? It's not hard to identify once you've drawn the circles. Okay, so just to recap, let's draw each of this, these planes corresponding to each of these circles and see what the element would look like. And also just understand from where, which point of view we're looking at this square on the bottom left. So let's start with the YZ plane. If we look at it from the right side along the X axis, we can see we have a 32 MPa stress upwards and a 0 MPa stress to the left. Similarly, the XY plane, which is the plane we started in, we have the 32 MPa upwards and the 16 to the right. And finally, with the XZ plane, looking at this element from the top, we would have a 0 MPa stress upwards and a 16 MPa stress to the right. Okay, so take a pause if that's, if that's hard to visualize and just go through those steps one by one so you can see it yourself. That's it for this example. Questions, comments, constructive criticisms below, you know the drill. And yeah, thanks for watching. Tune in for another example. Keep working hard.